Hi guys, Killer Duke here. We are here today to discuss about the protection paladins and how they should gear at the specific type of progression rate, what uh, are the best buffs they need, what is the most important consumes you need guys, and what is the best talent tree you really need. First of all, we are going to begin with the gear. Assuming we are using the maybe unofficial uh, Blizzard's blue post statement that it is going to use some specific type of 1.12 patch gear wise but the release of the progression is going to be a little different than those as many know in the private servers. Sometimes I'm reading those forum posts and reddits and some other uh, streamings that are discussing about paladins how they don't have enough gear they are so limited within the gear they cannot gear up properly f in order to def to survive and do some threats in the raids and I hear so m much other posts about how terrible paladins are in the gear relation but you are here to find out that unfortunately this gear exists and you have a lot of options how to gear at every single level as a protection paladin and at the same time to have defense cap and to have at the same time weapon which is co making uh, a lot of threats number one pre-raid gear stockade pauldron shoulders it drops as a world drop and you can enchant as an enchant because before black lair is released or more say about zoo group before it is released you don't have any options about the shoulders enchant so you can use some random enchant like maybe resistance or whatever then you have read up clock you can enchant it uh, with a dodge sorry if i'm wrong about it but i'm mentioning the dodge enchant it drops from a tribute run from darmo north then you have a dead bone chest enchanted with health or stats depend on what you like the most health or mana or any other stats that can help about surviving it drop from skolomans then you have fell hardened bracer you are enchanting this bracer with a stamina enchant and uh, it is very hard one to obtain you can get it from a dharma west and it is dropping only from a summoning boss which is required for the warlocks to pick an epic mount they need Dead bone gauntlets it drops from a scholomance from the random six bosses it's a mini bosses and it is it's a bit harder to get then you have a dead bone girdle belt which is again the same thing and then you have a dead bone legs and dead bone sabaton feet you enchant both of them with this health on the legs and the stamina on the feet assuming that there is no zoo group and chance for your legs so that's why we are mentioning health and chant and then you're going to aim for band of resolution finger it drops from argent down reputation but in case if you if this finger for some reason doesn't exist in original classic there is another alternative and that is uh, a finger from sunken temple it provides you for defense and some stamina i don't really know the exactly amount of stamina but you're going to find out and then you need nagling finger which drops from blackrock depth and because you maybe will have extra defense you want to take a force of wind wheel trinkets which is mandatory for your death cap and it's a nice protection tanking 
trinket and as an alternative for the second trinket you maybe can use demon's blood trinket from blasted land quest which is a, a bit harder quest to to achieve but with time efforts you 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 are going to make it so this trinket in case you lack defense it provides you three defense anyway you really need the death cap that's why i'm mentioning this trinket but as an alternative if you have a little more defense than you need you can have maybe the pvp storm spike insignia trinket for dodge or vigilance charm trinket for dodge from dharma west which is a little easier to to get compared to pvp one or if you like some more threats you are going to to search for briarwood read for threats it's a trinket that drops from upper black or spire and then you go for draconian shield which is famous pre-raid shield and it still drops from upper blackrock spire and if you really like some nice threats weapon on the pre-raid you want to choose for flurry axe or iron fall both of them have a chance to to proc a seal of righteousness and seal of righteousness also increasing the proc rate of those two weapons which is really nice to have it as a pre-rate and have some extra threats keep in mind that as a reminder i want to tell you the list you are watching is not everything there are so many other items which can be options for you to gear up as a protection paladins that have extra defense and stamina at the same time in one item like for example a quest from easter plague lands there are enchanted thorium legs or whatever so there are still so many items that you can use but the least currently you see it's the best one pre-rate i mean that with the best one on a pre-rate there is no better item than this but there are alternative in case you cannot get those lists so the pre-rate gear is mainly the gear you need before you enter molten core and before you enter soul group and that is like the best list for these raids all right number two best pre blackwing layer items in classic to expect I heard on the blue post that maybe we are going to have at the same time releasing a black one layer with Zoo group but obviously the, the world bosses are going to be released before that so I decided to make this list with the best items before black one layer which includes the world bosses and molten core in those so we have enchanted thorium helm which you can get it from crafted medallion neck from molten core stockade powder and shoulders as a world drop read up clock from a tribute run dead bone chest from skullman's mini bosses felt hardened bracer from swanning boss from dharma west dead bone gauntlets from skullman's unmelting ice girdle belt it drops from azuregus which is a little harder to kill but it is uh, the best one before you step to black hole layer item but there is some alternative to that item anyway so we're going to talk about the next items dead bone legs drops from skullman's core forged grieved feet from molten core it's an epic boots heavy dark iron finger the most famous finger epic finger from molten core that gives you defense stamina and some armor band of resolution finger as i said previously i put this finger because i assumed there will be the items released at the beginning from argentown reputation but if 
they don't exist we are going to use the alternative items which exist in the game like from Sunken Temple Fingers or some others previously where I mentioned from the pre-raid gear alright next Onyxia Blood Talisman Trinket it drops from Onyxia Force of Will Trinket drops from Blackrock Dead, Draconian Shield and it drops from Upper Blackrock Spire so the best weapons you're going to get from this raid it's Azure Song weapon which is the best and easiest to get as a protection paladin of course the healers and the casters are going to get angry but screw that min maxers this is the best threats weapon for you or if you have this 1% lucky chance or somehow like that the best weapon is for defense and threats at the current threat uh, the current progression level it is thunder fury with this list you can see you have exactly the defense cap so you don't care about defense or getting critical strikes on you because you're immune to crits thanks to defense cap and even on the previous list you can see that you also have a defense cap and at the same time you do a lot of threats using a threats weapon so you're not losing or wasting any kind of defensive item for threats or vice versa you still have the both of them at the same time here we go next the best items before AQ and with those items you're ready to kill and to rate AQ with the full performance and to be most optimal for them in this list I also included zoo group items which is typical because uh, zoo group will anyway be released before AQ release so here we are Enchanted Torium Black Helm it is crafted from Blacksmith Master of Dragon Slayer Neck it dropped from a Nefarian quest item from Black Lair Stockade Pauldron Shoulders but you are going to use zoo group spell enchant and it is a world drop uh, item Overlord Embrace Cloak it, it drops from Zoo Group Dead Bone Chest drops from Skullman's Fell Hardened Bracer as we already mentioned twice it drops from Darmo West to Morning Boss Dead Bone Gauntlets Unmelting Ice Girdle Belt from Dragos Blood Socket Legs it drops from Hakar from Zoo Group Core Forged Grieved Feet, it drops from Molten Core, Heavy Dark Iron Finger drops from Molten Core, Overlord Crimson Band, it drops from Zoo Group, Onyxia Blood Talisman drops from Onyxia, Stylings Impeding Scarab, it drops from Black Queen Lair, which is amazing trinket to have and maybe the best one, yeah. Elementum Reinforced Shield, it drops from Black Queen Lair and the best threats weapon which is easy and even easier than any other weapon for you to obtain is a locker mirror from black and lair this is like the best threats weapon or let's say it does nearly the same threats as a thunder fury but still thunder fury wins uh, this threat weapon on threats by a bit and Thunder Fury also offers you some nice defensive uh, proc which is really nice for you and uh, some AOE threats which is more wanted than Lokomir but uh, you can use Lokomir as an alternative in the fights where you don't want to use AOE surprisingly now as you can see on on this list you have like 15 extra defense not only that the problem or the issue about paladin defense as most of the people are telling you is wrong but it's also 
terrible conclusion or statement they are telling about protection paladin because even without AQ gear you have 15 extra defense on your best Molten Core, Zulgroup and Black Queen Lair and Onyxia items. With this 15 extra defense you can even shuffle this list and switch some another for the other. For example you can switch Fell Hardened Bracer for Judgment list which is much better with stamina and armor. It also provides some, some extra threats thanks to spell damage and some other uh, stats like intellect or whatever. And you can also have extra defense to even change your cloak for Onyxia cloak which is highly needed for last boss in Blackwing Lair or some other boss. Next on the list is the Pest pre nax gear which is gear that includes AQ40 and AQ420 in this list. And I begin with Helm of Domination, it drops from AQ20, Mark of Sitton Neck, it drops from AQ40, Pauldron of of the unrelenting it drops from AQ40 Cloak of the Golden Hive it drops from AQ40 that bone chest drops from Skullamans or you can use any other depend on your own wishes Fell Hardened Bracer drops from Dharma West Gauntlet of Stephas it drops from AQ40 Royal Kiraji Belt it drops from AQ40 Blood Socket Legs drops from Zoo Group Boots of the Unwavering Will drops from AQ40, Signet Ring of the Brows and Dragonflight bro drops from Brot of Nosdemol Reputation, Ring of Emperor Veclor drops from AQ40, Onyx of Blood Talisman drops from Alicia, Stalin Impedient Scarab drops from Black Lair, Blessed Kiraji Bulwark drops from AQ40 and it is really hard to, to obtain to be honest because it have extremely low drop rate and it can drop from multiple bosses and Lokomir or Thunder Fury depend on which one you are having chance to get if Thunder Fury drops from Multicore or Lokomir drops from Black Moon Lair and on top of that it drops it unlocks the Librams, but Librum of Fervor is the best for threats because you are going to use Judgment of the Crusade for more threats. And in this list, you are going to see that you have even more extra defense than the previous list. You have 17 extra defense, which can exchange some of your items like Fell Hardener Bracer change to on maybe tier 2 Paladin Bracer or Dead Bond Chest for some other chest like Enchant Tutorium or any sort of epic chest because you have so much extra defense or maybe maybe not Dead Bond Chest maybe some other item like whatever it's on your own choice I don't like to mess on your choices but you do whatever is best for you that's what I can say with this list you have you can see you have 17 extra defense which is way too high compared to what you need in order to be death cap so let's go next best in slot forever gear helm of domination AQ20 Marcus Itun AQ40 Pauldron of Unrelenting AQ40 Cryptfiend Seal Cloak drops from Nax Iceband Brace Blade it drops from Argendown Craft Item that can be obtained from Argendown Reputation and some quest line Iceband Bracer the same Gauntlet of Steed Fast AQ40 Royal Kiraji Belt from AQ40 Blood Socket Legs from Zoo Group Boots of the 
unwavering will, age of 40, signet ring of the bronze, dragon blood brought of Nosdemoru, reputation ring of Emperor Vecklor, age of 40, grief of deflection drops from Nax, it's from Saffiron, which is really hard to get, and it is actually the best surviving and threats making trinket for for extra block and extra block value which is increasing the block damage you do with your shield styling and padding scar from black queen lair blessed kiraji bulwark from 8 to 40 and now we're coming to the best threats weapon in the game for a protection paladin is red blade Many can argue, argue that the Thunder Fury is better. I can tell you that they are both equal or with the minor inches a right blade, blade is winning. But because Thunder Fury is doing AoE, extra AoE threats, it wins on the AoE fights for a little bit. Or let's say Thunder Fury is more wanted. Not only because it is easier to get compared to right blade as a protection paladin I know mean maxers what they want to say but also thunder fury provides you a defensive buff debuff on the boss which slows the boss's attacks and this is giving a, a slight advantage not only as a threat weapon but also as a weapon for defense liberal fervor in this list you can see you have exactly defense cap with maybe two extra defense for whatever joke but this is like the best list forever for protection policy you may argue that the shield is not the best but because we use the glyph of deflection as exchange to onyxia trinket this is like the best trinket ever but it doesn't offer you any kind of defense that's why we have to use a 40 shield for some more defense in that case if you don't have grip of deflection and if you're raiding next by any chance then the the there is a, a better shield from nax in case you're using onyxia trinket instead of grip of deflection and that shield from Nax is better than Blessed Kiraji Bulwark. But that's alternative list. As I said, this is not the only items you can get. There are so many alternatives. You can find them through the game. You do all your own research and you pick what is the best for you. But this is the list that helps you a lot. How you should gear as a protection paladin in order to have the best possible surviving stats in order to survive any kind of content not to get boosted but to survive any kind of pro, pro content as a progression rating and at the same time to do a lot of threats using the best kind of threats weapon you need the reason why I put here the threats weapon is there are not some good defensive weapons and you're not warrior warriors need attack power they're limited to weapon damages their threats and whatever but you don't you work as a spell damage your threats work as a spell damage unlike the warriors that's why you choose a spell damage weapon not some random poor defensive weapon or whatever still thunder fury is considered as also defensive weapon but it is really rare to obtain you're not going to lose a lot or any kind of defense by choosing threats weapon because threats is the key for protection paladin and at the same time what you most need and what you what your weaknesses are as a protection paladin is stamina and defense 
the list I'm presenting you offers you enough stamina, armor, defense, threats and avoidance in order to be able to tank every single content boss or mob so whatever you do easy as cake don't let people tell you that you as a protection paladin have a limited items to choose it's not true you have every single item you want to use for any kind of progression and for everywhere you need you have so much items on the list and you have multiple lists to choose that it is beyond the imagination of those trolls who are telling you that paladins don't have items i know the stigma that the people more often are telling you all oh, the rays drops tears which is so simple to get and those tears offers for the people sets and bonuses and whatever and it is more easier to get uh, gear as a warrior or whatever it's not true you as a paladin is using offset items not only that the warriors are not going to mess you up so much they are still going to with your kind of gear or vice versa you also have much more chances to get this gear because you want the raids they don't like you want zoo group you want aq20 you you want aq40 offset but okay it doesn't matter they aq40 offset you want aq20 zoo group and craft items the warriors don't really like that they want tier sets and they have a competition they are less likely to get those items because of the competition and you as a paladin have can rate zoo group and aq20 for example twice in a week unlike them who have to uh, who can rate only one for their item so don't let people tell you that you are going to get your gear harder than the warriors it's not true also don't let people tell you that you need intellect gear or mp5 gear in order to 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 make threats or to tank it's not true also properly skilled protection paladin don't really need so much intellect or mana pool you have the tools to region your mana and to use your mana much more properly or much better than the warriors have a tool to use their rage for example you have seal wisdom that can regenerate mana for you you have judgment wisdom extra mana for you you have demonic runes you have mana potions you have inner raids you have uh, blessing of wisdom or whatever you have so much more tools that causing your mana to be on at the infinite level unlike the warriors who are going to starve rage or they are going to hard try to use those mighty rage potions in order to make some threats but uh, at, uh, after tw 2 minutes they are going to cry for rage again unless they are going to get hit by the boss they are nowhere near close to you and if the target is immune in town they are screwed up you uh, as a uh, other way you have uh, passing of protection that nobody can be immune or resisted to that and you are still going to make a lot of threats without even tanking the target unlike the warriors who cannot because of the raid starve next is the buffs there are some mandatory buffs that you always want to use this is like a must for a paladin you always buff blessing of salvation on the group i know the rogues or the hunters may argue but blessing of salvation is 
making the fight more safety and comfort for the whole group or raid. It you cannot make mistake with that. Unlike them using might in order to show off how better DPS they are going to do and to then to reset their threat it's wrong because blessing of all salvation is going to increase 30 percent extra of their overall dps even before they use those tricks to reset their threats which gives them no time to stop and full dps all the time unlike blessing of might which can increase their dps for extremely tiny percentage and then you for yourself want to always use blessing of sanctuary not only because of the return damage making threats but also it reduces the damage taken on you it is really important for a paladins for both stuff damage return and damage reducing it is a must for you and righteous fury without this buff you're not going to make extra threats but you're going to use a normal damage threats which is bad with righteous fury on your own you are getting extra 90 percent with improved talent of course you are going to get extra 90 percent threats for every single holy damage you do and on top of that, Holy Shield have extra, I don't know, maybe 20% or something, including this Rise to Fury threats. So it's beyond 100% for Holy Shield if you're using this buff. There are op also optional buffs, but they are always welcomed if someone else from the group can buff you with them. This is Blessing of Wisdom, which increases your ma mana regeneration and it's good for threats. Of course, who doesn't need any extra threats for or extra DPS? Everyone needs. Blessing of Kings not only offers you the stamina for better surviving, but also offers you some more intellect in order to manage with your mana pool much easier and agility for extra dodge or whatever strength for block value and little bit threats but unlike sanctuary this doesn't provide you the best threat or best surviving sanctuary is damage reduction on each swing which overruled the stamina from the kings but both of them are welcome of course power words fortitude because extra stamina is always welcome and it's better for extra health pool easier for the healers to heal you mark of the wild for all the stats and resistance which is of course always welcome arcane intellect for bigger mana pool so you can easier control your mana depend on whatever you do and the most not welcome buff is blessing conservation on you you should never use that buff on you using blessing of salvation reduce your threats by 30 percent so you don't like that on you at all even if you are using poly power add-on to buff the group you want some any kind of other one that re removes automatically blessing of salvation from you there are some you you can find it around i don't know if blizzard remove some add-ons or not it depends on your blizzard and as an optional buffs is everything else you get remember paladin is highly dependent on stats and on gear on whatever everything you put on the paladin as a buff is bonus is extra is more threat is more surviving everything every single bit of buff is always welcome the next one is consumes here's what people are confusing all the time they are telling you that you don't have mana you don't have threads and whatever this is also confirming they're wrong first of all 
what you can use the warriors are unable to do because you can increase your threats by big amount of portion thanks to consumes the warriors cannot increase their threats unlike you because they are maybe increasing their threats for a bit but you are increasing your threat by huge margins and not only because of the spell damage consumes but also from the mana consumes which allows you to spam more and more and more spells while they are going to rage starve so the mandatory consumes which for every single tank is normally flask of the titans for extra health i know that in original classic it is going to be harder for you to get but also remember in the classic the bosses the raid bosses are not going to hit you so hard as those in the private servers because in the original classic you have three times lesser physical damage done by the bosses i have seen some archives from and you can also find some old school videos from 2005 and 2006 the very same boss from the original classic is doing three times lesser physical damage on the tank with the same gear unlike most of the people have experienced it in those private servers one of those examples is chromagus i've seen uh, screenshots from a guild who have raided chromagus and i have seen a lot from that screenshots chromagus in original classic when it enrage it does 1000 damage per swing and 25 percent or a little more swing speeds so it does like 1000 or 1.5 thousand damage per swing in those private servers you are witnessing it is doing 3000 to 5000 damage per swing during a rage phase so you can imagine how big difference have the original classic between those private servers you are aiming for or you know about so Humagus is not a hard boss even to tank on original classic and there is no hard boss for a Paladin or druid tank in order to main tank so you can survive every single boss very easy without any problems if you are playing correctly by meaning correctly a decent or good noobs are always noob and always are going to be noob doesn't matter if they play warrior or paladin or druid so we are not discussing here about how overall people or how noobs are playing or those who ah, okay i play protection paladin but doesn't matter it's bad no you are going to play with real protection paladins or you'd never play with the protection paladins because that's the same as you are playing with some disaster protection warrior joking around and dying like nerd because he's not using shield blocks or whatever so straight back to the consumes mandatory is a flask of the titans for extra health but keep in mind in original classic you can survive majority of the bosses even without that because this is not a private server demonic runes it also increases your mana to and uh, you're going to use this rune in a controlled way so you don't kill yourself but it's easy if you are proper paladin tank it's easy for you to learn how to use this and it's like whatever and in case you have wasted your potions for something else and you don't have a mana potion for you in order to not get without mana you have runes which are 
not connected to the cooldown with the potions so you can always regenerate your mana with the monochrons without any problems on top of that is the druids inner raids power infusion from the priest or whatever next is mayor mana potions this is really amazing for your mana p mana and as i said you don't have to waste trillions and trillions potions and runes in order to 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 properly kill or make threats you don't spam you're not a warrior who is spamming spells you need to use your spells wisely like judgment of the crusader and seal of righteousness doesn't require so much mana and until those 30 seconds are going to be spent you're going to regenerate back your full mana that you have used on those spells even without using any kind of consume thanks to buffs and thanks to the normal spirit on top of that this is why spell damage is important this is why you need crater arcane elixir and brilliant wizard, brilliant wizard oil on top of spell damage enchant on the weapons and the spell damage weapon because they offers you high amount of threats on your seal of righteousness judgment of righteousness holy shield and consecration keep in mind that consecration is not the best threats ability mana wise not only that it will not increase your threats so much on your single target but it also will spend your money in no time but you want to use holy shield seal of righteousness a judgment of righteousness more often and if you want to properly to have big amount of threats on your single target and and to have judgment of the crusade for extra spell damage and extra threats for that okay now optional consumes but they are required on some fights not all the fights but they are still welcome crater nature fire frost arcane shadow protection potion fire protection potion we all know we need for molten core for black moon lair for onyxia nature protection potion and even arcane protection potion we need on aq40 on zoo group nature protection potion and on Nax we need frost shadow protection potions so it depends on what fights you need which potion this is the same for anything and then you have a crater stone shield potion it is most important for the bosses who hit hard like for example Hakar in zoo group Chromagus in Black Queen Lair Gar in Molten Core Kolemak in Molten Core and Twins in AQ4 or, or Osirian or AQ20 Maxna in, A in Axe or whatever Patchwork or Nax any kind of hard hitting bosses with a physical damage and then you have free action potion it's not useful potion for every fight it's a optional one but it's it is always welcome on the bosses who are making you stuns, fears and whatever and for example the first boss in black queen lair it does some nasty stuns and with this free action potion you actually can continue tanking this boss and making more threats and more threats even after the stun swiftness potion it's not like you need it at all but it is always welcome especially when you kite when you run to save someone in the group when you want to have a really good pull quick pull or whatever so you just run through and as a death cap you are not getting days remember this when you don't get days and why you need death cap when you're doing kiting and there we pulls big pulls and whatever is because of this potion you quickly run pull everything and you away and finish 
nobody is going to need a days and slow movement speed you are doing wrong if you are using lesser than death cup for aoe's why i know force reactive disc or whatever shenanigans uh, people are using but it is not important it is not also optimal for that maybe it is once you pulled everything and you stick in one spot but overall fight it's bad because you're getting days you are very slow your pulls are slow and whatever with swiftness pollution and with death cup you're quick you are very effective ag agile and fast to do stuff really quick and you're not going to waste your time on any kind of group or whatever optional consumed but anyway welcome it as bonus it's not important you don't have to waste any penny gold or silver for this it is just bonus it's everything else that exists remember paladins are highly dependent on stats they are highly dependent on every single bit of buff you get and it is always welcome to have extra consume no matter what you are going to change. the next one is base talent tree for tanking this is not the best talent tree for tanking but this is the basic one that majority and those who want to try to tank as a paladin can use in order to try and see how it works and everything in order to tank some five man dungeons some decent raids casual raids or whatever and this is just for any normal paladin player a decent paladin player or new by paladin player on this base talent tree i have chosen divine intellect over improved self righteous that is because you want some bigger mana pool in order to learn how to control your mana how to 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 to, to use the spells properly in time to to avoid some confusions and everything extra parry is always welcome in order to have a little easier on the raids if you lack on gear and everything i i use it to the def defense uh, talent because you anyway want diff cap for raiding because this guide is mainly for raiding one not for a five man for five men you can be whatever even holy i don't care but this is like the most effective or base one as a beginner paladin if you want to learn how to properly tank as a protection paladin and the last thing is the threat generation talents and this is like i would say the professional protection paladin should always use this I know in some of my videos I didn't use these talents but that's because of some other reasons in official classic this is going to be the best protection paladin talents for raiding and it is for a professional why I say professional is because you don't have divine intellect that increase your mana pool because you're already skilled and have a nice control over your mana in that case you focus more on your threats on your single target threats like seal and judgment of righteousness as you can see i don't really need parry to be honest that much because the gear armor is the biggest thing that you need and extra three percent parry or four percent parry are not going to make a big difference unlike a bigger amount of threats where it will offer you bigger amount of damage done by the depressors and shorter fights lesser heals and whatever so it's much more efficient to have effective threat generation 
especially if you gear up properly, you're not going to have any bit of problem surviving at all. So don't let the trolls confuse you that you're going to have uh, problems with surviving. It's not true. So you basically go for improved righteous fuel of righteousness in on top of that 100 weapon specialization improves uh, seal of righteousness it offers you huge amount of seal of righteousness and white swing threats thanks to righteous fury and judgment of righteousness is also really amazing to have Divine Strength offers you some block value and extra threats on your white swings Something that the warriors are missing. They have like distance for extra threats for the white swing But it's not going to increase for them that much thanks to slower attacks Unlike warriors you don't have slower attacks, but you have 10% extra threats to white swings thanks to one-handed weapon specialization and then you're going to have a consecration which is of course always welcome for AOE fights you're using uh, lesser mana requirement for judgment you don't want a blessing of might that is a job for retreats or heals or whatever to buff you don't really need that much attack power it is welcome but that's not even close to the threats you are going to do with spells and spell damage you have an extra armor talents, you have precision, so you don't miss your swings. And read up. The read up is, to be honest, worthless or pointless to use. But we need the shield absorb 30%. It increases our block value by, by our shield blocks by 30%. It is amazing to have that because instead of blocking like 100 damage you're going to block 130 or something so it's huge importance for us to have shield absorb talent but in order to have that talent we gotta use Redupt Redupt is pointless unless you see it or whatever but eating critical strike is far worse than eating a crushing blow crushing blow is providing you 50% extra damage on you while critical strike is 100% which is dangerous for you to use, to have so read up is most unimportant but I know some may argue with force reactive disc and they we stops but as I said you I rather go for being most effective without getting days run fast pull everything AOE using seal and judgment wisdom so I never lose my mana and I can always max spam max rank consecrations without um at all which is 10 times much more threats and damage against the AOE targets unlike redups so holy shield because it increases your damage reduction thanks to blocks and it's increasing your threats by huge margins ju improve judgments so you judge more often more threats like nerd and everything so this is basically the short guide I have decided guys to make you unfortunately there are so much false information about Paulins about everything and that is not because the people intention are to make this false information but it is because the there are not enough paladins who are going to make a properly raiding guide and there is so much lack of info from 2005 and 2006 and all info you have is from broken private servers unfortunately now I'm going to back to improve it on hand. You always hear about people telling that paladins don't have all shit buttons like buttons that will 
have a defensive cooldowns on you and whatever. That is simply not true. You, unlike the shield wall, warriors are using for enrages, which is of course extremely good, but it lasts for a few seconds and you don't even know whether the warrior is going to survive or not. Unlike the warriors, you have a 2 minutes 30% extra armor on hand. It, it is increasing your health by maximum amount and it's healing you by a maximum amount of your health and it is providing you little mana if you are without mana. It increases your threats thanks to being healed by a lot and it also provides you 30% extra armor for 2 minutes. You know, most of the fights doesn't even last 2 minutes. So you are the most effective tank and most viable tank to survive in those fights where even the warriors cannot match with you. Like 2 minutes. Oh, but someone else can t uh, is going to tell you there are holy paladins who are going to do. Yes, there are holy paladins, but the same 5 holy paladins who is going to provide improved level handle warrior, you have 6 level hands, not 5. So, level hand is basically better or equal to, to shield wall. Better because it lasts for the very long time, like two minutes, without having any kind of problems for healers or anyone to heal you, and you can rotate with other healers, so you have full time on the very long fights, extremely protected and damage reduction. Unlike the warriors who are most effective on the enraged timers, but it lasts for very short and they are going to probably die afterward or before that. Unlike warriors, you're going to survive much better and much easier. And the other point I want to point out is the warriors are usually telling you, oh, last 10 we have, last 10 provides them nothing, it only increases health pool, but it doesn't heal them or whatever. Unlike warriors, you have a bubble that you can macro to instantly remove that bubble, divine, intel, divine protection. And with that bubble, you instantly remove all the deadly debuffs from you, which is going to cause the warriors 100% percent that. So your cooldowns for defensive cooldowns are 10 times much better and more efficient than the warriors. I know the warrior can use improved lion hand and shield wall, but as I said, Extra lane hand is much better than a shield wall itself. Especially that if you properly gear as a protection paladin, the surviving is not problem at all. Even for enraged fights, they're joke for you, especially using improved lane hand. Something that warriors don't have and they always want. And this is something people never tells you why or why or what that's because the people lack of knowledge about protection paladins all right thanks guys i hope i didn't tire you tired you so much about protection paladins in this guide there is so much more info that i didn't mention in this guide there are a few errors maybe here and there within the guide like the items, maybe a few errors there you can find or my personal speech is not maybe the best English speech so sorry about that but unfortunately I'm the voice of the real protection paladins I am so glad if I see other protection paladins around it's up to the people whether they like to play protection paladin or not I know most of the people are forbidden to be protection paladin but I encourage everyone to give a try and I don't force anyone it's up to you guys whatever you want to play whatever you want to enjoy to play I enjoy personally to play protection paladin I'm running my own guild I don't have a problems joining in any guild because I'm skilled and I know how to play and I'm not going to disappoint anyone 
I hope in the future there are going to be more guides and I can help you as much as I can so you guys don't have a problems tanking as a protection policy so you learn more about it you see there are stuff you never heard or never knew about protection paladins how they are underestimated compared to what they can be and everything keep in mind those people don't know much about paladins even the streamers you're going to run around you're going to see so much stuff that are far from true as for a protection paladins even those protection paladins themselves never ever raided as much as I did because I myself have cleared every single raid in the game that exists as a main tank protection paladin I know how this work perfectly because I have like more than 13 years experience I play since 2005 and 2006 when it was a fresh game and I always been a protection paladin even in the original and I will still continue being an official class protection paladin. Sometimes I will be joking around with my shadow priest, but mainly protection paladin. I know very good about PV. I'm not good in PvP, unfortunately. So you can ask PvP to Toloras or some other, like Asphalt or other streamers. I don't care. I always welcome everyone who want to learn more about it but as protection and retribution PVE I'm going to provide you the best experience you are going to have of course I'm going to try but there are still alternatives so it's up to you whether you're going to follow this guide or not whether you want to play whatever you want it's up to you uh, the next guide is I hopefully going to make is how you are going to tank uh, raid bosses and those raids how it work in the raid bosses in what fights and everything I'm going to explain every single bit in this game about protection paladins and how they work in the raids it is going to be fun and you're going to discover a lot of things you never knew about it how it work and everything which is completely different than what majority of the people are going to tell you because majority or let's say 90% of the people don't even have any idea how it work at all and those who know are extremely tiny minority I'm going to talk about how to use spells when to use spells and everything so you can learn it so much easier how you manage or control your mana control over your threats how you manage to to play with your spells you don't so you don't have a problems with threats or mana and everything and how you play I know you are going to see me that I'm playing with some old school style play style because I'm used to that style since 2005 and I don't have any problem I usually drink my coffee when tanking so I also talk and joking around so it's not hard to play protection paladin at all all you need is to learn first how to play and unlike warriors who are wasting their time crushing their carry board and at the same time because they are so much wasting time on pressing those buttons on the keyboards they are losing their focus and unlike them you have full focus how to tank stuff without any problems I'm going to also provide you uh, explanation how to main tank bosses which requires towns so you are going to see that town requirement bosses are not impossible for a paladin to tank and they're not really no go for paladin tank they in fact have abilities which allows you to main tank them but the people don't really understand and know how they work if you do your own research in Wawiki, you're going for to find those abilities and you're going to find out why pal paladins are able to tank those taunting requirement bosses like three dragons in Blackwing Lair or even the hardest one as everyone say for horsemen. It's not impossible but it is um, 
really challenging even for professionals. So exclude four horsemen, which is only one single boss in the game. Everything else is easy and simple. How you are going to tank as a protection paladin? Hope I will have time for that to explain you everything, and I'm going to try my best. Even that my time is really limited until October, but I'm going to try hard. Thanks for watching. I hope there will be more info in the future. And press that subscribe button. Thank you. See ya.